I think we did that intro a little while ago. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second round of the MCU Future Series. This is Spivey 4994, as we say it on IG. And they allowed me to pitch this game. I'm running on three days rest. I think I said that before, too. Ladies and gentlemen, joining me in this extraordinary evening on an extraordinary topic. Ladies and gentlemen, I got the creator, the generator of Nerd Generation. That's right, Mr. Pablo Solano. Pete, how we doing? I'm doing good, man. I'm doing good. How you doing? I don't know, man. I think, you know, like I said before, I think we can win this game. We wish everyone the best out there and um, continue to support. God bless everyone involved. But, P, I got a special guest. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. I found him. He was missing. He was in Brooklyn hanging out with Freddie. <laughs> I found Freddie, and then I found him. Ladies and gentlemen, it's an honor, it's a pleasure. Let me tell you something just off the cuff, aside from all the uh, theatrics and hieroglyphics that we do around here. But, um, but ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the stage someone I respect in this industry, someone I respect his votes. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, all, all accolades will follow after the end of the video. But ladies and gentlemen, thank you for allowing and give a big warm applause for Mr. Jeff Strange is in the house. Jeff, how we doing? What's going on, man? What's happening? Jeff, it's good to have you here. It's a pleasure to have you here. It's an honor to have you here. It's good to have another voice and also Thank a voice that much. knows Thank what he's talking about. Uh, listen, it's always a pleasure. So I tell you, you know, you can walk in the door anytime, any place, anywhere. We will be glad to have you come in and give commentary and to all mutual friends. Yes, I got Jeff here, like I said it would. I know y'all doubted me through tomatoes, through potatoes, but guess what? It didn't work. I got Jeff here. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we are continuing the MCU Future Series. That's a collaboration between Egghead News and Nerd Generation, which we're very proud of, and we're doing a lot of good things, a lot of great things during this time of need and a time oh, yeah, of maybe... Um, Somewhat distraction. I, I like that logo for the nerd generation. Oh, thank you, man. Thank you. I was like, oh, so, yo, that's that's dope. Like, you know, so, <laughs> so look at the hair. I was like, all right. It just came we to me one day. It just came to my head. I was like, yeah, I, I need to do that. We always like to be you know, innovators around eggheads and uh, nerd generation. We like to be, as I said earlier, we like to be the Tony Starks of the industry. A lot of people are doing it, but a lot of people ain't moving it. Anyway. <laughs> Getting back to what the number one topic that we're talking about, ladies and gentlemen, part two of our MCU future series. Today, we're going to talk about Blade. That's right, Blade. Marvel okay. Cinematic Universe has now finally got their hands on Blade. And ladies and gentlemen, we're going to break this up in three different segments so you can follow along and enjoy the ride. We're going to talk about where we were, where we are, and where we're going. And I think, gentlemen, I think I want to open up this uh, this podcast by talking about where we were. Now, let's start from the beginning. Ladies and gentlemen, Blade was a new line cinema movie back in 1998, directed by Stephen Miller, excuse me, Stephen Nordington. First Blade, then uh, Blade 2002 was directed by the great Gildelmo Totoro, and I'm sure you all know Gildelmo. He uh, did uh, Hellboy series, Pan Labyrinth, Pacific yeah. Rim, Scary Stories, Shape of Water, that's the one shape of what? That's the one he got the answers for. Yeah. The man's awesome. The man's great. Do I think he'll come back? I doubt very much. Stephen Norrington, who did the first Blade, if you did know a little quibby twist thing, Stephen Norrington did the uh, League, of, League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, which I like that movie. You guys yeah. are heads. It was, I like that it was movie. One, it was one of those films that when it was on, because it don't come on a lot. Yeah. You know, it's very yeah, yeah. rare that it comes on. But when it does... You, you stop and watch. You got Sean Connery yo, as quarterman. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, yeah, yo, mm -hmm. yo, Jeff, you just took away my uh, you just took away my uh, uh, trivia quiz. What was Sean Connery's last movie? The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Ain't that crazy? Wow. What was it? Nah, I don't think so. It was. That I was the last that. movie he made. I look. I looked that up. That was his look last that up. That's the quiz. I don't the think last so, movie he made was The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen, and he hated it so much, which is so sad. <laughs> but he liked yeah, that Zardoff. <laughs> he liked that 1970 Zardoff. We walked around in, in a in a in a torpedo. <laughs> <laughs> it came out in 2003. Yeah, 2003, and yes, it was his last film. You know, but. For for some reason, I think I thought that was like the '90s or whatever. Yeah, right. I did. I really thought that was like a '90s movie. Listen, the League of Extraordinary Gentlemen is how um, 
Charles Towns Townsend. After he did Lee, he got the Lestat role. I mean, there's a whole oh, lot of movie man. trivia. We're gonna go down that road, but yeah, we we we, we know who was Stephen Nardi did something soon. <laughs> I know, right? We look like we got a pop contest, but let, let's let's stick to the topic. The third movie, the most controversial movie in the Blade series back in the day, was the 2004 Blade Trinity, and oh yeah. boy, who was also in that? Who was in that? Ryan Deadpool Reynolds, baby. Yeah. That was his audition. What do you think? P, yeah. I think that was his audition for Blade. He was funny. Yeah, I mean, well, you think, he's yeah? naturally, he's naturally a funny guy. Yeah, you expect him to be, you know, a smart ass, and I mean that that's him in every movie he's been in, yes. except the the Amityville oh, Horror. Uh, is how, that a is that it, a was blessing? he like that with um with with Denzel Washington's film? I think Safe House. Well, yeah, he Ooh, came, he came up right. a few smart lines, but it was mostly serious. I mean, you know, that that comedic timing that he has. It's just hard to take him serious. You know, after you get punched in the face a few times by Denzel, you know, like, oh, my God, I wish you would stop doing that, you know. (laughs) Hey, Jeff, what about the movie when he was trapped in the box? They say he should have won an award for that one. I never saw that. That was always recommended he was trapped. Yeah, he was trapped in like in a coffin. They buried him alive. Buried alive. Was it the name of it? Oh, I thought you were talking about yeah. <laughs> yeah. First, I thought you were talking about R. Kelly trapped in the closet. <laughs> well, that was nineties. That was no, that was early two thousands. Yeah, that was two thousand five yeah. when he did, <laughs> when he put out that series. But David S. Goya did the last Blade Trinity movie, and him and Wesley got to the point they had to they had to hold Wesley down because he wanted to get the brother because he said he thought David S. Goya was a hack. David S. Goya has went on. It was called Buried, and it was in two thousand ten. There it is, oh, Buried. Okay. We just bouncing, we just bouncing these movies off, ladies and gentlemen. We know what we're talking like, about. Yeah, yeah, y'all looking, okay. y'all looking for the mother cats. Y'all want the mother cats who don't know what they're talking about. David S. Goya, he also went along in the future. He also wrote Dark Knight. Now, was it really he wrote Dark Knight, or did you think Chris, uh, Chris Nolan took it and he amped it up? He did a couple of things with Nolan, and you know. You know, David S. Goya has a name for himself. He's also doing the CW series, the DC properties. David S. Goya is David S. Goya. But let's get to the point. Blade in the beginning was Wesley Snipes. How do you gentlemen feel about Wesley Snipes playing Blade overall? Give us a little history. I just want to say something real quick. This one, uh, you made a comment about David S. Goya um, and, and Christopher Nolan. And um, you, you you mentioned that did Chris Nolan influenced how that movie ended up being how David Goyer's Blade Trinity wasn't that well received in my opinion no it wasn't but you and I both know uh, Nolan must have took it and rewrote it Chris Nolan has his signature you know what a Chris Nolan movie looks like yes right but go ahead Jeff talk to talk to us about um, what you thought about Wesley Snipes as Blade well I mean after his rise, after, you know, when, you know, when people saw him do Passenger 57, it was like, he's not an action hero and blah, 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 and this and that. Wow. He but, the, it back. but the martial arts community, they knew he was real. He was, a, I think he was a, a black belt in Shotokan, but, um, you know, they, it said he was real. And then after that, then I started seeing him at some martial arts uh, festivals and things of that nature. So I was like, yeah, oh, okay. He, he, host, he hosted a, a martial arts award show. I don't know when. That was a long time ago. Let me look that up. But, um, you know, because people wasn't really convinced in everything else, you know, and I'm like, I know he's had some weapons training as well. Wesley's from the Bronx, right? That's correct. Yeah. So I... I think, you know, I, I knew he, he had some training or, or whatever. I didn't know it went into weapons training because, like, he was dangerous with that sword in that movie. You see, the, the essence of cool that he carried with him as an actor, oh, mm-hmm. that transferred over, mm-hmm. you know, when he gave yeah. out, you know, classic lines like, some motherfucker's always trying to skate yeah. up hill, you know, <laughs> and shit like that. <laughs> it's just like, yo. I was like, yeah, Blade. Because, I mean, I knew about Blade. I, I remember the first comic book I read with Blade in it. It was called Tomb of Dracula. Blade had wow. a control. Blade was using wooden knives back then. That's right. Correct. He Preach. Had, he had the he had the you know the the Star Trek Kumo D shades. <laughs> yes. 
Oh, yes, man. yes. You know, he had the green. The LeVar Burton. He had the LeVar the Burton uh, Star Trek gen next generation. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, it was just like, it made sense, you know, with a wooden stake through the heart, and he's throwing wooden knives, and I'm saying like, dude, if he live in the forest, he ain't worried about nothing. <laughs> he's going to be just, <laughs> uh, I'm dying. <laughs> uh, you know. Listen, the, Wesley is always a memorable character in any movie that he does. Even too right? long food. Uh, <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, he wasn't pretty in that one, man. No, he was the <laughs> ugliest woman I ever seen in a movie. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh, wow. Has, uh, wow. Wow. Yeah, Patrick Swayze looked like an old, decrepit white woman. And, <laughs> and Wesley was just looking like, bruh. Ladies and gentlemen, that's when you don't want to be stereotyped. Pete, tell us how you felt about Blade and about the first, I mean, really, the first MCU, excuse me, the first Marvel movie yes, indeed. hitting the big screen Started ever, it all. ever. Yeah, and just want to make a comment, because um, I made a, a statement regarding Wesley Snipe hosting a martial arts event. He hosted a, a show called Masters of the, of the Martial Arts, and it was Ooh. presented by Wesley Snipes. I this was 1998. That. I remember, wow, that. Wow. I remember it. They got a, they had a Chinese dude come out and do a hundred pushes right there. Blah 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 blah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but getting back to what you were saying, uh, you were asking me about how I felt about Wesley Snipes uh, when he first started. Well, the first one that obviously started it off was just Blade, right? And as Freddie would say, it's the first time you see that flip card, that Marvel flip. That was the first yeah. time we saw that. It almost had the same feeling that I had when I saw Black Panther. Yeah. Something we've never seen before done like that. A very good perspective, very good outlooks on Blade and Wesley Sex when he first took the role. My perspective was it was 1998. The only other movie that was coming out at that time for us to really dig down and enjoy, I think the the first Matrix came out. That's right. That's how I, I remember okay. that time. You yeah. had Blade and the Matrix. Those two were like hand in hand. They were like handcuffed together. We ran yeah. to the movie theaters, and the first thing we said when we got back to work the next day, yo, did you see Blade? <laughs> next thing you know, yo, yeah, definitely. did you see the Matrix? After that, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, they became icons. They became iconic. But yeah. yes. Wesley Snipes got on screen, and he carried that movie. Yes, I knew him for being Nino Brown. Uh, yes, I knew him from New Jack City. Yes, I knew him for being that mother. <laughs> but anyway, Wesley Snipes took that role, Blade, and he took it and expanded. Blade 2 just, say, just, Blade 2 just expanded the role by putting him in Europe. Making sure the vampire could cross the ocean. It was, it was just crazy. And remember, there was no banner. There was no Marvel films, anything. Anything. All you saw was Amon Ra. Amon oh. Ra, that's right. That was well, Wesley Snipes' own production company. It's amazing. It was just amazing. I think the last Marvel theme movie that came out before Blade was that horrible Captain America movie. Really? Oh, God. Really? We're going to fact check that one. Yeah. We're going to fact check uh, that fact, one. Fact check that one because I remember fact I was with... working in a movie theater back then, so I know that's damn sure the 90s. <laughs> I was working a movie oh, theater. Oh, yeah, I, was, I, I ran a movie theater myself. That's right. Movie theater down on Broadway, 19th and Broadway. I was there. I thought I could have sworn that was before Punisher. Let me look at Oh, that well, yeah, when, when, with Dolph Lundgren? Yes. I oh, was, man, y'all bringing it back. They're throwing it back, ladies and gentlemen. He said, Dolph Lundgren, I don't want to get off, I don't want to get off topic. We can go down this road and fall down the cliff. But, yeah, Blade brought it back for me. I, I, I thought that... Um, Wesley carried it well. He was a hero. Yeah. We looked forward to seeing him. Oh, we yeah. were looking forward to the oh, next yeah. movie. And then Blade Trinity came back. And, and then when they announced it was going to be Blade versus Dracula, I was looking for something real big. What the heck happened? <laughs> Somebody, David S. Goya wrote it. They gave him a couple of bucks. The only uplifting thing I found in the movie was Ryan Reynolds. I thought Ryan Reynolds was great. I thought maybe uh, Chris, uh, Chris, Chris Christopherson that they uh, wrote him out. That if I say his name right. Yeah, cause it, but uh, they wrote him out, it? and to come to find out that Blade had his own like little uh, unit. It wasn't just Blade; it was almost like a franchise. I said, "Okay, I don't know, know where they're going with this," but obviously, it, but then it didn't work. Ladies and gentlemen, it didn't sell. It didn't work. It didn't lose money. Yeah, I think they broke even with that one. 
Yeah, I think they broke even. But anyway, going back, here we are now in the future. Uh, Kevin Feige, Mobile Studios, they're running up their 10-year run. Mobile Studios is changing the game, owning the game. We've said that in so many podcasts. Mobile Studios owns the game. Kevin Feige gets a phone call from, that's right, I'm going to say his name right, Mershala Ali. <laughs> <laughs> Mahershala Ali. Mahershala, yes, yes. yes. That's right. Mahershala yes. Ali. See, I got it right. It took me, it took me once. <laughs> I just stood out there, make y'all laugh. See, I got them all up control, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> gentlemen, he made a phone call, and Kevin Feige said, sure, I'll give you a movie. I'll give you a franchise. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. All you had to do was call him? <laughs> ladies no. and gentlemen, that's not the truth. We all know Ali had just came off the hype role he played in uh, Luke Cage over on Netflix. We know that. We also know him for True Detective, House of Cards. He was also in Attila the Battle, Battle Angel, which I don't know if a lot of people appreciated it. It had a little James, it had a little James Cameron uh, 1980 feel about it. A lot of people loved it. A lot of people loved the animation and everything. But Attila the Battle, Battle Angel seemed a little... It was old... The evil corporation, like we used yeah. to have, you know, those 1980 <laughs> movies. It almost yeah. reminded me of Total Recall. Boom, boom. Somebody yeah. said, wow. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. also reminded me of Total Recall. But wow. I'm, not, I'm not here to beat up um, Alita Battle Angel. But still, he was in Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. And his first movie, I, the one that broke him out, if you guys saw it, I, I saw bits and pieces of it. The Curious Case of Benjamin Button. <laughs> Ali was in that movie. Yeah. That's a trivia question I just threw out there, boys and girls. <laughs> he was in the curious case of Benjamin Button. But anyway, here he is. He makes a phone call. Kevin Feige, hey, I want to be Blade. Sure. Come on down. <laughs> when they work, work, work. Jeff, how you feel about that? How you feel about that, Jeff? That they didn't even offer it to Wesley Snipes, and Wesley's been sniffing around ever since he got out the pokey for that little tax thing that oh, he yeah. didn't deal with. Go, but go how me. you feel about that? I mean, the, the guy just makes a phone call. And the guy just takes my role. I mean, if they talk about RDJ as Iron Man, then West Dog is Blade. Well, it, and he's still young enough to play it. Yes, you, definitely. You can get it. You could have got a. You could have got a stunt man. Because you know, you could have got a bump man yeah, to do it. Yeah, but you know, just tell us how you feel about that, Jeff. Just to get into who Blade is. Blade is is a a vampire. He's the hybrid between human and vampire. Because he has all the, you know, all the benefits of being a vampire, but none of, you know, he just uh, he can still walk in the sun. Mm -hmm. So he he doesn't age normally like a human does. He ages slowly. Yeah, he's got the Wolverine age span. Yeah, exactly. So he's gonna be around for a little while. So yeah. you think about that and look at Wesley and how he's kept himself up. With the stigma of him, you know. Being in, you know, not paying taxes and whatever, and you know, of course, he's going to be not, hungry and, for. And apparently, uh, apparently, not uh, being a good, uh, shall I say, coworker. Yeah, there, there's always now, been. Well, that I, film I don't think around. that David S. Goya carried. I don't think that David S. Goya thing carried. I just think Jeff is well, Jeff is on a good uh, threat line, saying it's the the tax thing, and then obviously yeah, a lot of people don't know and, his little media information. You, studio companies have to take insurance on actors and actresses. If you don't know that, if they were having problems getting insurance for you, a studio won't hire you. Go ahead, Jeff. And you also got to look at um when he was on Money Train, which I think Money Train has his best martial arts scenes ever. Mm -hmm. If you ever go watch Money Train, mm -hmm. he was whooping a lot of ass in that movie. Especially when he went up mm -hmm. against the Italian mobsters in his own club. And, you know, he I mean, just the, the choreogra choreography, just like, oh, yes, you know. So he was John Wick before John Wick, I hear you. Yeah, so I, I really think there was a lot against Blade doing it. Now, if you remember, there was a little short-lived show for Blade with Sticky Fingers as Blade. From Onyx. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Now, I mean, when I saw him in costume, I was like, oh, okay, Sticky. I ain't mad at you, bro. <laughs> now, I only watched like one show and it seemed like a lot of the the <laughs> movements were stiff. You know, much yeah. much like the first season of Iron Fist. Ah, Wow. Exactly. No, he did it. Yes, I did. Pablo can go on and on about Iron Fist. Because <laughs> I heard that breath he took. <laughs> He's like, don't, don't even get me started. <laughs> I'll just say this about Iron Fist. I kept watching, hoping for greatness, and it never came. Go ahead. Yeah. Well, anyway, yeah. That, that's, yeah. A, that's a whole other show. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, <laughs> but, you know, I'm not mad at the choice in Mahershala. There, there are a few other actors that probably could have played it, but this is Hollywood, and they want to go after the name. Yeah. The man just won an Academy Award for Moonlight, and he just came off the, uh, that other movie where he was the piano player. And had yeah, the, he was in that joint for like five minutes. I don't know how you get five minutes, yo. Yeah. How long was he in that movie, Moonlight? Listen, y'all gonna go down this road. We gotta talk about <laughs> Holly Berry winning that Oscar for, uh, come on, man. All I saw her was bending over the sofa, and she got an Oscar for that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, hey. Don't even go no. there. But I mean, don't even go there. But I mean, from the popularity that he played, um, playing Cottonmouth in Luke Cage, which I thought mm-hmm. he was gonna live mm-hmm. through it. And, you know, probably like second season, he would get the, get the teeth because the original Cottonmouth had snake-like teeth. And he was also yeah. is equally as strong as Cage. But, you know, they never really got into it. So. Can I make a comment about that? Yeah. When, I, when, when they killed Cottonmouth, after that, it stopped being Marvel to me. But, you know they go they gonna change the script that, yeah I I know exactly what you yeah, th- what you're saying because they yeah. they change a lot to adapt to this new audience and this and the changing time that second half was horrendous yeah because I'm like well gentlemen the bad. fact that you bring up about cotton mouth now that we uh, I know hindsight is uh hindsight is 2020 or as they say up in Harlem hindsight's a mother anyway as we look back, it looks like Netflix knew they were not going to keep this Marvel deal. Why would you kill off a character like that where you can schedule his, his shooting time based on if he was to do movies or other solo projects? Yeah. Cottonmouth was the draw, but apparently Netflix must have known. I don't think we're going to be in this deal too much longer. Look how long we knew about it, that it was happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That the possibilities were there, they surely knew. Oh, yeah. Because there's no way you kill off Cottonmouth. He was great. Yeah. Yeah. I was was like, yeah, he going to make it to the second season of this. I was like, if he do go to jail, it's going to be like some, you know, whatever, three, four months and he back I never even thought they would kill him off. Who would have thought they would have killed him off? That was crazy. And I still don't understand that awkward relationship between um, Shades and Mar- Black Mariah. And his- that, that was just awkward for me through the whole thing. I was like... Yeah, it, it, it didn't seem real. It didn't seem real. He had a better relationship with Cottonmouth. P, uh, give, me, give, me, give me your uh, perspective on Mr. Ali being Blake. Now, you had a couple of things. We talked about mm-hmm. it when San Diego Comic-Con went open, and uh, mm-hmm. they dropped it right there at the end of uh, the Marvel Hall H. They just dropped it. He yeah. said, I'm, he said, what did he, what did he yeah. say? I'm Blade or Blade? What did he, the way he introduced it, it was like that was the end of the day. They, they won Comic-Con again. You know, they mm-hmm. knocked everybody out the box. I mean, P, how you felt about that? I mean, that came out of nowhere. It did come out of nowhere. I'm certainly... I'm certain that it was a surprise for, for for everyone. Nobody was not surprised unless the people who were there that were making the deal. Those were the only people that, that knew. But I wasn't mad at the... I, I wasn't... You know, everybody was shocked and excited for the possibilities, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I think they were shocked at the fact that it was a Blade property. Because everybody didn't think Disney, Blade being rated R. You don't think we'll ever see that. Yeah, we, and yeah, next thing you know, he just yeah. opened the doors. That's what it for was. The possibility Jeff. for that. For that. That's possibility, what it was. Yes. You know, look at look at Deadpool and what it did. Because I mean, you know, mm-hmm. truth be told, how many kids are in R-rated movies? Okay. Much. Exactly. Let me ask you this. You know, everybody felt a sort of way because of Wesley Snipes. Yeah. Because the minute that drug was announced. Thank you. Everybody, but what about Wesley Snipes? And for 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 a week or so, we had um, there were discussions being had mm-hmm. regarding this. Yeah. So, uh, but I understand business decision wise is like they want somebody that's going to do this for the long run, not do it for two or three years. Yeah. And this dude is looking older and older and older, not getting any younger. They, you know, Hollywood does their thing because, you know, I think what was it? Um, I think Dion Cole said this. 
like it's a it's a shame when like you know you look at the news and you look at at a the woman anchor she has to constantly dye her hair and do all kinds of stuff to keep her job yeah you know and then the man if he if he does get any gray it shows wisdom and everything else that's good when you're yeah he could, a men could gray out but women can yeah, yeah. When, when you're mm-hmm. delivering information people can respect that mm-hmm. but when you're entertaining mm-hmm. None of that matters. <laughs> you, you have to look yeah, young yeah. all the way. And they're, they're just, like you said, they're looking for longevity. They want to get that 10 yeah. years out of them. Like, you know, Chris Evans yeah. can probably pay Captain America a couple of more times. And after a while, you oh, know, yeah. you go like, you know, we're looking for a new face, you know, something fresh, you know, to blah, 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 blah. You know, that, nah, all I think that as Hollywood long as song. Chris Evans is alive, as long as he's alive, he's going to play Captain America. Oh yeah, well, he's got a while ago for playing Steve Rogers. They, oh, like yeah, I said, yeah, I, yeah. I just think what they, the fact that they put Cap all up and down the time stream, Cap can oh, yeah. appear in the future, Cap I can mean, appear in the past. I mean, that yeah, was Infinity an easy War is out definitely for not them. the last movie we're gonna see Cap in. Oh no, en- uh, Endgame, Endgame. Yeah, Endgame. Yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah. Like you said, Jeff, you said you said something, um, and based on the conversation I had with Tracy when he mentioned this guy's name, and I'm pretty sure you were thinking the same. Um, um, actor, we may now may not, or, or may be thinking about the same guy. I want to see if you agree. Is uh, Mustafa? Oh, I was gonna say like the dude that played um, uh, Bushmaster. Yes, I've I've seen him in one other thing, like a small scene. I've seen him in something else. He has a regular accent because you know everybody was everybody, especially Caribbean Americans. He's like, that's not the real accent. They don't talk mm-hmm. like that. You know, you, you got all that, yeah, 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 everything yeah. from Luke Cage. But the look, yeah. the way that they may be looking at it, he may be too ethnic looking because he has a hard face, a hard. I mean, not not saying yeah. he's ugly or nothing like it, but his features are chiseled. Listen, every time he showed up on screen on, in Luke Cage, his presence he the screen. Was felt. He, his presence he is the screen. Yeah. In every scene that he was in. Jeff and I talked about this earlier. You get one chance to make a first impression. That's it. That's not fair. That's not right. But it's honest. You get one chance to grab that attention. Yep. And you can't blow it. Mm. You get one chance. Uh, as far as our lead playing Blade, we see where that goes. I think Pablo hit it on the head saying there's a whole lot of bad feelings, a whole lot of hurt feelings. But, you know, we all got to move on towards the future. I think that's the bottom line. And that's where uh, Kevin Feige and people at Disney were going for. I think they were looking at the next 10 years, the next round, or the next two phases. Basically, phase four, phase five, and phase six. Um yeah. A business move. Can I can I touch on DC versus Marvel for just a second? People always like, well, why the you know DC has more characters and such and such, such, and Marvel, you know, they don't got more famous black characters. Not that right. Who else? Who they got besides besides John Stewart? Black Vulcan. Black Black Vulcan got to put some pants on. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Is that your five? Oh my God! The thing that I don't understand is what's going on with DC. You have a plethora of characters that could really make some money. Like when he did the showcase cartoons and I saw that Spectre cartoon, that was the whole movie. That could have been a horror flick. Like the way that 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 whole little 20 minute cartoon was expanding. They were talking about like, yeah, I'm just a dirty old cop from LA. You know, that whole grittiness and like, you could have made that into a two hour flick. Then you get we introduce the mystical yeah. side. I mean, you got plenty of characters. I'm like, me and, and my, my other dudes from my, my old podcast, we were talking about like, why are they doing the question? Just characters like that. You have a the question is a great. They keep the question is a great character, but like you said, yeah, because they keep rehashing Batman. How like many goddamn a... Batman? And I love Batman, but how many Batman movies are we going to get? Oh, you done hit on peace, Listen. panic button. You said Batman. <laughs> Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. We're going down the other side of the roller coaster. Can't be, let me have it. No, I'm just saying, I love Batman. But there's got to be, there's other characters. DC has a whole bunch of characters, man. They could have, it would have been Marvel having to catch up to them. It would have been, because when Marvel did it, they did it with this intention in mind. They knew that they were the, the only game in town that was attempting something like this. Yeah, exactly. If DC would have done it, 
if DC would have done it, Marvel would have perhaps, maybe, maybe not, because they got they got a mind in Kevin. But imagine still the pressure to having to live up to that and be better. Yeah. If you if somebody already was doing it, DC had all the opportunities in the ones that they never did. Yeah. And I don't want to veer too far off for Blade, but um, Jeff, there's there's one character that I've spoken to about to Trey. And 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 they, people keep sleeping on them. Icon. I don't want to have a couple, long conversation. Just want to mention Dwayne McDuffie. I just want to mention that. God rest name. his soul, man. That I just want to mention that that movie that could have equaled Black yeah. Panther. <laughs> Go trade. So instead of Go doing trade. Icon, they want to put Michael B. Jordan as Earth X <laughs> Superman. I mean, it just makes no sense. <laughs> Uh, my thoughts on this, I'm going to look forward to Blade. I'm looking forward to play, Blade being involved with the Midnight Suns, yeah. a little involvement with Doctor Strange. I mean, Wanda, WandaVision, I think we're going to get werewolves, vampires, and all the things that go bump in the night. The only thing we can't get is Harry Potter, because that's not part of this franchise. Disney don't own that. Yo, anyway. do you think that there will be, being that Morbius was delayed because of the coronavirus and everything else, do you think there'll be a crossover between uh, Blade and Morbius? As they did in the comics, of course. That that will be allowed if Kevin will allow Blade to go over to Sony, or if Sony will do the smart thing and let the MCU produce. This that is movie. where it gets complicated. Yeah. Because I mean, yeah, because Morbius belongs to the Spideyverse, and you know you don't want the MCU feeling like they they're just gonna take all those guys. Because you see, they held off. Well, th- this is all due to when. Marvel was about to get bought by DC and they wind up selling off, you know, movie scripts and everything else. And they just sold, sold all the right to keep the, you know, the comic book company afloat. And I'm just like, why'd you sell it off, man? I was like, you're supposed to get those back when you get that money. Mm-hmm. But nobody did that. But I, th- I think you know why they sold it off. You remember the 90s? We were having uh, comic books wrapped up in riddles wrap. Aluminum foil. Remember that stuff, yeah. ladies and gentlemen? Boys yeah. and girls, they had the, all the Avengers. I know, I'm a 90s guy. Remember the Avengers? Everybody had a leather bomber. Remember that? Cersei had a leather bomber. Rogue had a leather bomber. <laughs> uh, Hercules had a leather bomber and had a big A on the corner. I mean, that was the 90s. Tin foil. The number one books back then was Mark Testera's uh, Ghost Rider. If you guys didn't know that, the number one book. And we were just getting ready to launch uh, Image with Wildcats, um, Cyber Force, Spawn. All that mm-hmm. stuff was happening in the yeah. 90s. That's why Marvel was losing money. Of course. Marvel was losing money. And I don't know what happened. Maybe somebody didn't count the pennies over at downtown Manhattan when Marvel was still in New York. Marvel was now over in L.A. for obvious reasons. <laughs> but um, that's how it was. You know, things changed. And um, they didn't have the outlet of media. Marvel really wasn't the media, but that Spider-Man show in Japan was big. That Spider-Man show, it was funny. Japanese people loved it, but it didn't work well over here. I mean, the whole thing with Japan and USA, a lot of things, a lot of people leave and head out over there, and they never come back. Once you go over there, you start making money. You need to come back to USA, but that's another podcast for another time. Ladies and gentlemen, some of the storylines that I might be looking forward to, ladies and gentlemen, we like... Getting together with the Midnight Suns, I think the yeah. Dark Hold or the the Dark Book, Tython coming out of uh, Doctor Strange. That's right, Tython. He's the big bad in the Marvel Cinematic Universe next to Mephisto, next to Dormammu, and Dormammu's sister. Ah, you guys oh, didn't know man. about Umar. Umar is just as bad as her brother. She's even yeah. worse because she has certain type of appetites. Uh, need to be the Incredible Hulk. Need to be Hercules to be even <laughs> able to take out for dinner. But anyway. All of that is down the line, but I just think a culmination of somebody reading from the dark hole, somebody reading from uh, as Marvel's ne- necro- Necronomica yeah. book. I mean, there's a lot of things that Blade can get involved in. I just don't think Blade will be solo. I think that Blade will introduce the Vampire Nation. That's right. The MCU has their own Dracula, but he's not like Bella the Ghostly. Oh, what beautiful music they make. But anyway... <laughs> The Dracula from Tomb of Dracula and Marvel, uh, Marvel Comics is completely different. This guy's got the Vampire Nation. They're like S.H.I.E.L.D. They got their own oh, organization, yeah. satellites. They're almost like Bruce Wayne. The Vampire Nation and Marvel is something that, you know, Pablo talked about it. That's something we may go forward it, with. It, it, There's a lot of storylines that they could do with Blade to continue the franchise. 
Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. This is, yeah, this ain't true blood. The Vampire Nation is real. And they do their best to stay away from the uh certain heroes that they know can wipe them out. A la Thor, a la Hulk. There was a series a couple of years ago where the Hulk went to Transylvania. He damn near killed every vampire. They was yeah. listen, every entity and this goes back to Pablo and what I was talking about, we gotta get rid of Lunchbox Hulk. Lunchbox Hulk has to go. <laughs> Lunchbox Hulk has to go. We can't have a Hulk that's over there dissecting and giving people diagnosis and dapping. What, what the hell is this? Wearing Sean John outfits. Yo, you talking about Cash? He had a Sean... That is, <laughs> yeah, was that, oh, my God. Ladies and gentlemen, we can't have that. We need to have the Incredible Hulk back <laughs> because I know what the Incredible Hulk did to the Vampire Nation. I know what he did to the Vampire Nation. I loved it. Dracula was scared to death. Dracula went out there and fought him, and the Hulk damn near killed him. But you and I know the Hulk should damn near kill him. You cannot stop the Incredible no. Hulk. You could probably stop Period. this one, though. <laughs> you oh, could probably stop the MCU's version. <laughs> that dude is uh, done. Oh, uh, boo, that dude is done. Boo. Is you done. can stop Mark Ruffalo's Hulk. Yeah, Mark <laughs> Ruffalo's Hulk got to go. <laughs> <laughs> you need to break. I think Kevin is finding it real hard to let him go. He's like, "Come on, let's have some lunch. Let's talk about." I what mean, you think. listen, I'll walk out the movie uh. theater. I'll walk out the movie theater. It won't be Corona. I'll walk out. I said, "Listen, if I see him give one more person a diagnosis, I'm walking out." <laughs> yeah, because that, that Professor Hulk. I just I'm looking towards the future. <laughs> Not to talk about um, other people on YouTube doing their thing, but. I was looking at top 10 nerds and it was like the top 10 things you didn't know about Wolverine. And one of them came up. Mm -hmm. No, it, it wasn't a top 10 nerd. It was somebody else, a British dude. But um, he put it up there that Hulk, I mean, not Hulk, uh, Wolverine and Thor, I mean, and Hercules were in a relationship. What? Yeah. Messed me up. <laughs> what? Just look at the top 10. What? 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 <laughs> I said the same thing. I was like, Wait, what, what? Wolverine and Thor? What? In, in this version of Wolverine, he's looking like, um, John, you know, like Walker, Texas Ranger. Mustache, Chuck, you know, looking straight like. Oh, my. I, I, yeah. Oh, God. I can't. I, I, I got to be careful now. They did We got to be careful now because I can't. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, anyway, Blade, the future. I'm sorry. I had a good time. This is Test Spidey 4994, as we say on IG. Gentlemen, any other last words before we sign off? Hey, stay safe. Continue to wash your hands. It's not a new thing. It's an old thing. Uh, just keep yourself clean, six feet of distance and everything else. We can all beat this. A lot. There's more than 100,000 people have survived the coronavirus. They won't tell you that. Instead of, you know, keeping you scared on the news. But we can all beat this thing. We just gotta, we just gotta do it. That's all I can say. Yes. Like, subscribe, hit that little bell. We'll see you again. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. Part two of the MCU Future Series. This is Spidey 494 signing off. Joined by once again Jeff Strange and Mr. Pablo Solano of Nerd Generation. And we had a good time. We hope you had a good time. We will see you soon. Good night. Peace.